If you don't know me, I'm the CEO of Slidebean, an AI presentation platform with over 600,000 users worldwide, a lot of which are tech startups. We not only raised capital for our own business, but we went through some of the top US startup accelerators like Dream Adventures and 500 Startups. And we've helped hundreds of companies raise money through our product, in many cases sitting down with them and helping them craft their story. Today, we're gonna look into the process of raising capital from business validation to investor meeting. This is how to raise money for a business. Now, very few businesses can raise money before traction. Traction is proof that your business is viable and that you as a founder were able to bootstrap your way to it. We've covered this traction ordeal at length on our previous videos, as well as how to create a pitch deck. So now we'll focus on the investor workflow. Finding investors and getting intros. I had a lot of help here, mostly thanks to the accelerator programs I mentioned before. You see, the best way to reach an investor is with a warm intro, which means finding somebody you both know who can introduce you to them via email. When inside a startup accelerator, it's your job to navigate the partner's LinkedIn network to reach out and connect to relevant investors, meaning people who are putting money in companies in your stage and in your industry. Now, I would expect most of you watching are not in a startup accelerator, so your next bet is navigating your own professional LinkedIn network. The, the way I used to tackle this is uh, I would sit down with an investor list. We have one on Founder Hub, by the way. I would filter investors by industry, by deal size, and then start looking them up on LinkedIn. If you have a second degree connection that you know well enough to ask for an intro, you shoot them a quick email blurb explaining what you want, explaining who you wanna meet and whether they can introduce you. We'll look at the blurb in a second. So what if there are no investors in your network? Well, that gets trickier. The first step would be growing your network. So attend startup events, connect with people and add them up on LinkedIn. Alternatively, you can pay for a premium LinkedIn account and use it to contact them that way. Typically, LinkedIn has a reasonable response rate and it might be a better alternative than their cluttered email address. Cold emailing is really a last resort. Before that, you could even try Twitter mentions, but we're already stretching far down the rabbit hole. Your success with anything but warm intros will be quite low. The email pitch. The email pitch should be short and to the point. When requesting an intro, your email could look something like this. Hello person, I noticed that you're connected to Elon Musk. Do you know him well? I'm working on a new company called Blah Blah and I think it's right up your alley. I'm wondering if you can introduce me. Now for the investor email, assuming you get an introduction, you should also keep it short, something like this. Hi Elon, I noticed that you have invested in some companies in the whatever space. I'm working on a new startup that does this. We are not raising money at the moment, but we plan to open a round in the next few months. Can I send you my investor deck for you to take a look? I would love to get your thoughts. Needless to say, you shouldn't try to reach Elon Musk. The reason why I recommend going with the not raising money at the moment bit is because it helps. It helps for two reasons. Number one, you don't wanna appear in a hurry to raise money. No investor wants to put money on a sinking ship. And number two, it's essential to build relationships. Few investors will give you money if they just met you. So saying that you don't need money now is an excellent way to establish a relationship before actually discussing a round. If your pitch deck is interesting, you will likely hear back from them. This is why the first pitch is the first and only impression you might get to make. Now, if you share that with platforms like Slidebean, wink, you can get a notification when the investor opens the deck and know which slides they saw. If you wanna try that out, the first 25 people to sign up with the link in the description will get a free three month trial. After a couple of emails back and forth, you might get invited to a meeting. If you don't get a meeting, make sure to ask why wasn't the pitch deck attractive and whether there's a particular KPI they would like to see you hit. The investor meeting. First meetings usually are an informal conversation about your company. The normal flow would be for you to go through the deck, maybe a variation of the one you've already sent, with more details, especially on the vision and the metrics side. After a 10 or 15 minute walk through your deck, you'll jump into a Q&A session and discussion about the business, what they found interesting and whether you're going in the right direction. While I am not an investor myself, I have talked to hundreds of startups and I can undoubtedly say that the conversation that happens after the pitch is a fantastic way to get a feel for the founder's expertise and passion about the business. If someone like me can tell when a founder knows their trade, you can bet that most investors will too. There's also an inevitable founder compatibility variable. They have to like you and chatting for an hour is one of the best ways to find out. Negotiation and time. Other questions might come up. 
They might not like your terms. They might want more traction. At this point, the conversations could go in many directions. So here are some general tips for you to get through this. First, be responsive to emails and use an open email tracker. That will cure your anxiety and give you some visibility as to what's going on. Try to close conversations with an action point. Maybe a reply from them or your company hitting a goal. But make sure there's always an item to follow up on. Send monthly or bi-monthly updates on your progress. Make commitments and try to over-deliver. If you fail to deliver, acknowledge that you didn't, be honest, and explain what you're doing about it. Get a lead investor and a term sheet. Getting the first investor is the hardest. Once you have one, you can get others to follow in their terms. But that first one commitment will be very hard to get. A lot of investors, especially angels, will want to wait for a large investor to accept the round terms as a validation that they're not the only ones liking your business. So don't be afraid to ask them openly if they'd be willing to come in as the first investor. I always quote Elizabeth Yin, who was one of our mentors at 500 Startups. She said that you need to pitch 100 investors for every $500,000 that you want to raise. And we found this statement is actually close to the truth. So don't expect to close this deal with the first investor you talk to. A term sheet, by the way, is a summary of terms for the round, such as valuation, cap, fundraising amount, and other specifics. We have a few term sheet templates available if you want to check. Now, a signed term sheet means that you have agreed on terms and then you can go to other investors and say, hey, we have our lead investor, or we have X percent of the round committed. We interviewed the CEO of Ask Lorem, who had incredible insights on how they raised money. You should look into that session for ideas. Getting the money. If you're raising money on a convertible note, then the first check could be as little as 10% of your round. And you can close it and collect it before you even get the other investors. That's a great part about convertible notes. And you should check out our video on convertible notes if you haven't. If you're raising a priced round, then you will need all investors on board, signing the round to make it happen, which can, of course, take a lot longer. All right, so I hope you found this video useful. If you have any questions about this, please let me know in the comments. I usually make my best to try to answer them quickly. Hit that subscribe button and thanks for watching.